Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The news this week. Hillary Clinton has announced she's running for US president, ensuring yet more speculation about the strength of her marriage to Bill. Insiders say it's close, but no cigar. <laughs> One of the talking points of the campaign has been Clinton's intellect. The last time a president's brain was put under such scrutiny, it was being wiped off the back seat of a Lincoln convertible. <laughs> what, what, too soon? Yeah. <laughs> a cargo ship ran aground off Devon, sparking a free-for-all on Branscombe Beach. Some people got motorbikes, some people got nappies, and one lucky family picked up a Filipino cabin boy. <laughs> The only thing so far not claimed was the lantern, originally used to lure the ship onto the rocks. <laughs> Almost nine million people watched Davina McCall interview Jade Goody, beating the BBC One record for a Davina interview by almost nine million. <laughs> Shilpa Shetty is now favoured to win Big Brother and relaunch her Bollywood career. She's already been offered a brand new 300 film deal, which should keep her busy until the end of March. <laughs> this week, China used a ballistic missile to destroy one of its satellites. No one was quite sure what had happened to the Chinese satellite until it was spotted being lugged off Branscombe Beach. <laughs> Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers. Andy Parsons, Fred McCauley, Russell Howard and Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Shafi Corsandi. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of former First Lady Hillary Clinton. But what does H-I-P-R stand for? Is it Hillary's Invisible Puppet Ropes? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is not. Uh, is, no. it, is, it, is it Hands Indicate Penis Radius? <laughs> <laughs> Hillary in Plane Crash Reenactment. <laughs> Hitler invaded Poland, really? <laughs> is it just Hillary is physically repulsive? <laughs> I think she's no. all right. I think she's all right. I've always she's thought she's all right. She's yeah. a bit yeah. Do you really not find her attractive? I don't find her at all attractive. She's very intense and I... a bit like a reptile. But can I just okay. point out, she that's like... who yeah. you yeah. fancy. Yeah, she does <laughs> But that's her sex face when I'm doing one of my moves. <laughs> That's true. Well, that's can't everybody's see. sex face. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody turn into Ken Dodd? <laughs> <laughs> They're actually Diddy men all around. Yeah. 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 Is it? Negotiate back towards Hillary in presidential race. It's exactly oh, what it very well done. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. <laughs> Yes, the answer I was looking for is Hillary in presidential race. This is the news announced on her website that the New York Center is to begin a campaign to return her family to the White House and become the first female president of the United States. Do we think she's going to win? Well, it wasn't. Yeah. Basically, we've had Bush, didn't we? Then yeah. we had Clinton. Then we had Bush again. Now it looks like we're going to have Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> this from supposedly the foremost democracy in the world. <laughs> The last 20... Anyone can grow up to be the president. That's yeah. it. Anybody called Bush Clinton. <laughs> Basically, Clinton Bush Kennedy has got a very good chance yes. of winning the election. <laughs> the uh, main rival is a bloke called um, Barack Obama. Yes. Who's not going to win, obviously, because his name is too like Osama. <laughs> and it, uh, it just takes one slight mistyping error at the Pentagon. He's taken out with an airstrike. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's even worse than that because it's halfway between Osama and Obama. <laughs> as well be called Muslim or gun bomb. <laughs> <laughs> What's really interesting though, did you see this? That uh, his middle name is Hussein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're worried that he's not going to win the election because that's his middle name. Like, it is, it is a call on every level. Barak, is, which is not a good thing anyway, Hussein Obama, it's not a brilliant name. And, and, and they are traditional, there is, there is yeah. their history, there was, I mean there was one of the brightest lights in the 70s was um, from Illinois, I think it was, it was Senator Fisty McPedophile. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> For some reason, people didn't go for it. There are Scottish people at home, the McPedophile family in Scotland are thinking, that's where Uncle Fisty went. <laughs> They're here relatives reunited as we speak. <laughs> we always, we always wondered you. why he had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very unfortunate being called Barrack, isn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, 
Barack Obama, and everybody goes, OK, Obama, you <laughs> shit! <laughs> All the right-wing American comedians, they're just going to come... You know what they're going to come out with? A, a black man and a woman going for president? What's next? A lesbian pope? It's not a bad idea. Yeah, really, I've seen that yeah. video. It's brilliant. Yeah, that was so <laughs> oh, another difficult mask. Yeah, so, oh, <laughs> why don't you relax in the Vatican hot tub? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Russell, I can't get the image of you and Hillary Clinton out of my head Nor now. can she. Oh, I'm yeah. pretty good. Explore <laughs> yeah, at some stage, yeah. The, uh, no, and what was the slogan when you went on the line? Oh, Russell, do it again. I'm into, that wasn't the slogan. <laughs> I'm in to win, or yes, I'm in I'm and I'm in to win, yeah, or it something. Was. It, was, it was a reworking of Dale Whitten's lottery campaign. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in it to win it. <laughs> Americans always need that slogan, though, don't they? I'm in it to win it. Reagan's was, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Clinton's was, it's the economy, stupid. And Bush's was, um... <laughs> 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 Clinton and It's the Economy Stupid was actually more of a, a thing to remind the, his own campaign team to keep, keep going on about the economy. At no stage did he turn to the American <laughs> people and go, It's the economy, stupid! <laughs> I've been Bill Clinton. This is from the council. <laughs> <laughs> He's sponsored by the council to elect Bill Clinton. Uh, Thank God that Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> isn't standing for president yeah. because That'd voting be Austrians into high office has unfortunate historical prospects. <laughs> Who's been taunting George Bush this week? Has it been rodeo clowns? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything to get him away from the nuclear button. They've got like, little men that try and taunt him and lead him out into the garden <laughs> where he can't do any damage. But I, I typed in a thing into the uh, website this week. Um, I typed the words kill Bush into the internet and it came up with 42 million hits. Yeah. And, but you find yourself thinking, imagine if he did die. Imagine that, if there'd be so many people waiting to dance on his grave, you'd have to scatter his ashes in Ibiza. It's been <laughs> funny. I'm, I'm more worried if, if he dies that people will go to Google and find out who typed in the words kill Bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your name is going to pop up like, yeah. Oh, noted whimsical comedian Russell Howard. Harbored secret dark yeah. desires. A, hey, to shag Hillary Clinton yeah. and B, to kill Bush. Yeah. 41 million yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Russell can't be with us this week. He's in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Did anyone watch the uh, State of the Union address? I, I didn't see it all, but I heard uh, one of the soundbites on TV where he said, you know, give, give war a chance, which is, you know, <laughs> almost what John Lennon was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that thing where, you know, he comes out to do the speech. And he's supposed to be the leader of the free world. And you know that 20 minutes previously, he's been playing on a tyre hanging from a rope. <laughs> <laughs> what they should have done, because, it, you know, he didn't write any of it. It's poured over by other people. He's reading it from an auto cue. You, that's the way to break it. His you trouble could... is he's on the internet looking at all the people who've typed in Kill Bush. <laughs> <laughs> But what, what, what somebody should have done was just tampered with the altar cue. Could have had so much more fun, just him kind of going, my fellow Americans, I like big butts and I cannot... Uh... <laughs> I also know that uh, yeah, but, uh, Ronald Reagan had uh, micro-technology, a tiny wee earpiece, uh, he, and he got told what to say, and he once stood at the camera and faced it and said, why doesn't the old bastard say something? <laughs> There's that thing with the State of the Union address, I don't know if you watched it, where people come on and analyse what Bush has said. Like, analysing the words of this moron. It's, it's like sort of when in Lassie they used to try and work out what the dog was saying. <laughs> what, what's that, George? There's trouble in the Middle East. You've shat on the rug. <laughs> Let us go closer to home. Uh, why has there been a clash in this country between church and state in the last week? Oh, gay adoption. It is gay adoption, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well done, that. Russell. Well yes, done. Thank can you. you. <laughs> can you give us more information than that? Uh, the church don't like the gays, apparently. <laughs> um, this, this just in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which church? Uh, the, was, the Catholic was, Church. Catholic right? Church. Very and? upset because they say, called... that, they say that uh, two men having sex is not natural, as opposed to a man walking on water, which is very much... <laughs> <natural>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was, yeah. if, if God created us all, mm. then yeah. God also created gay people. Yeah. And the reason that God created gay people was he knew that occasionally we would need help getting the party started. 
<laughs> now, why does created stuff just for gays? He didn't create Sarah Jessica Parker for us. <laughs> she's for gay men. I mean, she's either a really ugly woman or a really beautiful seahorse. <laughs> I'd have, I'd have loved to have had a gay dad. Do you remember that thing like when you first go out for a pint with your dad and that was like no. a rite of passage and you know you, you'd become a man? How much better would that be if you both went to a club, your dad took his shirt off and started dancing in a cage? <laughs> you got school tomorrow, Frankie. <laughs> Do you like my wee gay dad? <laughs> I got that off the, the gay phone line ads. <laughs> Phone in now and talk to, talk to the most straight gay man you've ever seen dancing in your life. <laughs> You're not gay. I just rang in to say that. Wow. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the Catholic Church have said, um, said that current legislation that allows for um, gay adoption, gay couples adopting children, they're not going to give, they, they, they should be exempted from it. And but you know what they're going to do? They, they said they will, if they're not allowed to exempt themselves from the law, Right? If they're not allowed to have their own fiefdom with these children, then they're going to shut down the adoption agencies. They're essentially going to go, if we don't get to pick, then we're releasing the children into the wild. <laughs> um, <laughs> that they can run free. Go, go, children. We can't look after you. We can't guarantee you normal families. Like, go out, forage for food. It'd be hunt, great. Hunt for. Head of the Catholic Church in this country, isn't it? It's a bloke called Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor. Too fair. How right? Irish is that name? That is very Irish. I'm, I'm actually, hoping I'm that actually... Patrick is his middle name. No, no, no. Oh, I, no at this age, Irish, at this age, screw Patrick. He should be going as Cormac, uh, uh, Cardinal, which is very Irish in itself. Uh, Cardinal <laughs> Cormac Tura Laura, 800 years fields of Athenoy Murphy O'Connor. That's the only way. <laughs> that is, and only I am allowed to make that joke. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> otherwise, you're all like Jade. So. Uh, <laughs> The great shame of it is that uh, gay men will have all the experience they need to bring up children. Because if you're in a gay relationship, you've got experience of putting up with tantrums, you've got experience <laughs> of putting talcum powder on a sore bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so sad. Who cares where your willy goes, really? You know, my, my... <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> The thing I was going to say, who cares where your willy goes? My dad, when he was younger, put his cock in someone's letterbox. And he's a great dad. I mean, awful postman, but he's a great dad. <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, the winners are Frankie, Hugh and Chappie! <laughs> now we play a round called Rotating Newsreel Stand-Up Challenge Thing. This game involves Chappie, Andy, Frankie and Fred. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of topics. We spin the wheel and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject has landed on. The winner is a team I judge to produce the funniest material. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is sport. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. Now... There has been a lot of talk, once again, this week about drugs in sport. My feeling about drugs in sport, don't ban them, separate them, right? <laughs> Those people not on drugs, they have their sports. <laughs> <laughs> Those people who are on drugs, they have their sports, right? Because let's face it, if some idiot wants to pump themselves full of rubbish and run the 100 metres in four seconds, <laughs> we would like to bloody see it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. And the subject is Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Who would like to step forward and talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say he's not my dad, OK? <laughs> Now, I, I'm from Iran myself, and I do wish that Iran had a more moderate leader, you know, like a mullah light. <laughs> Take the edge off. He'd have a whole different approach to Israel. He'd go, we've got to give Israel a radical good talking to, and if they still don't listen, they're off the Christmas card list. <laughs> Whatever Christmas is. <laughs> ordinary Israelis get a lot of prejudice. I have an Israeli friend, and whenever she visits me in the UK at Passport Control, they go, occupation? She goes, no, it's just a holiday. <laughs> well done, Shabby Kosandi! 
OK, that leaves us with Frankie and Fred. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win the race? The next topic is Scotland. <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Scotland is officially the most obese nation in Europe. You'd have to wonder what we'd be like if it wasn't for all the heroin. <laughs> they, they were talking about making the next Bond Scottish. I was glad they didn't, you know, because Bond was always travelling to all these different countries. If he was Scottish, he'd never get out of the duty free. <laughs> Come on, Bond, we've only got 18 hours to save the world. It's all very well, Q. Have you seen the price of these little bottles of Stella? <laughs> Always drinking Bond, never actually gets drunk. It would have been good to see it just once. Try to phone Q in his ring. I fucking love you, man! <laughs> Thank you, Bond. <laughs> Let's see what Fred has been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is etiquette. <laughs> Fitch. <laughs> I think there's been a deterioration in etiquette, there's been a deterioration in manners and there's been a deterioration in language. And as a Scot, um, you know, we're often accused of using the F word too much. And, you know, that could be true. I think, though, it suits the pattern of our voice, it suits the rhythm of our speech, it actually fits in quite nicely. But I think I have found the epitome of the overuse of the F word that happened at a St. Johnson versus Partick Thistle football match, and the detail is vital in padding out the routine. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's in uh, McDermott Stadium, a stadium that can hold 10,000 people, uh, they've been told. And <laughs> five minutes into the second half, something happened on the pitch that the man five rows in front of me was not at all happy about, and he stood up and he pointed at the pitch and he shouted, Fucking! <laughs> Sometimes boo just isn't enough. Ben <laughs> <laughs> McCurry! At the end of that round, I'm giving the points to Andy and Fred. Come back here. <laughs> this round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Fred, mm. which category would you like? Uh, the environment, please. OK, the category is environment. The answer is battery acid, shampoo and wine. What is the question? Is it uh, a late letter to Santa from Charles Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it what will arrive the next time Jade Goody orders a curry? <laughs> is it what are the three things that haven't had a wall chart in The Guardian? <laughs> According to the autopsy report, what was George Best's final meal? <laughs> <laughs> is it what's do you in think the... that's what they do with <laughs> autopsy reports? Yeah. Is it the main ingredients of Branscom pickle? No. Oh, mm. nice. It is oh, to do with that story. What like? three things <clears throat> were washed ashore from the MSC Napoli? <gasps> that's exactly right. Well done. <laughs> Very well done. Good. The question I was looking for was what was included in the cargo washed up on Branscombe Beach this week. This refers to the MSC Napoli wrecked off the Devon coast. The ship lost a number of containers which are subsequently salvaged by locals. Was <laughs> any of particular favourite thing? The thing that I loved most was the giant balls of wool. And you think, what, what are they for? Giant cats. <laughs> It's quite enormous funny. cat. It was, it's, it was like, the... it's like a big version of like Secret Santa or Deal or No Deal. They're like run down and go, right, you take that one, there we go. Here we go. Whatever it's here, we open it. Okay. One, two, three. Hey, Mercedes! Ah, oh, asylum seekers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the guy who the guy, there was a guy who they interviewed in the news and he went, I've got a massive barrel of wine, nappies, and cat food. It's gonna be a hell of a party. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'd want to arrive at the right point in that party, wouldn't you? <laughs> Not at three o'clock in the morning when they're all wearing nappies and eating cat food. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Isn't it amazing that they managed to get into the crates? Because I find it difficult to get into a tin of tuna. <laughs> Finally, it's come in useful that everyone in Devon's got 18 fingers. <laughs> You know <laughs> 18 finger Devon. Oh, come on. You know that people in Devon are right now wearing nappies and worshipping motorbikes. 
<laughs> you just sat there going, that it, Frankie it Pence. Came, <laughs> it came from the ocean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is God's munificence. We were right to sacrifice your sister to Poseidon. <laughs> he yeah. has rewarded us. <laughs> the great thing was, though, on eBay, wasn't it, they're actually... You've got these motorcycle uh, airbags. Yeah. You know, and car airbags. Now, if there's something you don't want to buy on eBay, it's an airbag, isn't it? <laughs> you don't want, as your last thought, as you go through your own windscreen, Going crikey, I thought that airbag was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Worth £10 I ever saved! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be fair to eBay, eBay have banned the sale of anything taken from Brands Isn't there day. that strange thing of people have been shipping furniture across there was, the world? There was a Swedish family yeah. who were shipping herself to <clears> South <throat> Africa where they were moving, and then she turned on the news and saw her possessions being stolen by the crowd. Wow. And whatever you think about <laughs> a motorbike being taken from some motorbike thing, I mean, there's some moment in Stockholm uh, watching people putting on her hat going, Hello, I'm from Stockholm. Yeah. I'm from Stockholm. <laughs> I'm a big Swedish <laughs> person. <laughs> I'm off to South of Africa. <laughs> uh, that must have hurt. Sven, Sven, <laughs> come and see the television. Yeah. That's our airbag. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I feel sorry for, though. There's obviously people who normally on Branscombe Beach would have been going along with a metal detector. Oh, and for years, weirdos. all they've picked up, 50p, maybe the odd quid, they miss out one day, everybody else comes down, gets a brand new BMW bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> What, what the most valuable thing anyone came away with? The bike. Yeah, it, 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 is, the bike? It, it was the bikes, yeah. It, the, the motorbikes were the, were the most valuable thing. Uh, it's been a free for One Royal Marine told the Mirror, we only went for a look, I've come away with the BMW. <laughs> <laughs> An absolute credit to his regiment, that man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was oh one God. bloke that actually went, he had something, and they said, do you think you should take this? And he was a, a grown man, he went, find his keepers, lose his weepers. <laughs> and you're, like, you're an adult. Like, just imagine him at home. Dad, did you fart? He who dealt with smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it is, it is uh, you know, logic is ridiculous. Just because the stuff washed up, like, you don't go... If somebody, a pedestrian gets knocked over <clears throat> by a car and their mobile phone falls out of their hand, <laughs> you can't walk over and go, uh, is anyone taking this? That's mine now. Have you, have you, have you, have you been to Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> What was the bad news, by the way, for the Greenland ice it's shelf It's going this week? much faster than expected. Yes, it is. It's, it's part of global warming. But why is Greenland called Greenland? I mean, that's what's always confused me. It it's was, just reverting it was, to type now, isn't it? That's it was to it's try true. and entice people there. It was the brochure. Really? The, yeah, the Vikings called it that to try and make settlers go there. They yeah. lied. Nice. Yeah. Oh, the Vikings did a lot of bad shit. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, oh, oh, not just what? the raping and the pillaging, also lies. <laughs> <laughs> we have kind of buggered the planet up a bit. Yes. You know, the, the Brazilian rainforest is just the one wee strip of trees down the middle now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> I mean, that, that's going to hurt the planet. Never mind yes, the planet not having feelings. The planet did grimace quite looks, visibly. You know, yeah. you know they reckon that global warming will mean that creatures will now migrate to places that they've never been before because they'll be confused. And that might be quite good. Like Bill Oddie going out to do some bird watching in Norfolk and getting his head ripped off by a puma. <laughs> <laughs> We in this country, we do have to be careful about global warming, though, don't we? Because they reckon, don't they, that apparently as the globe warms up, we in Britain are in fact going to get colder. Only Britain's weather could be so shit <laughs> as the entire planet hots up, we in fact get colder. <laughs> It's so great that it's snowing. I think that's when you realise you're an adult, when you look outside and it's snow, and your first response isn't, woohoo! Then you know your, your soul yeah, is Yeah, dead. you've lost something. You've grown up when you open and go, hmm, this is going to cause some transport disruption. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the winners are Russell, Fred and Andy! <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can yeah. make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios. We'd love to see the performers come in with their suggestions. The first subject is... In the week in which the Oscar nominations were revealed, <laughs> rejected lines from movies. E.T. phone premium rate sex... <laughs> Milk, bread, rich tea biscuits... Are you sure this is the right list, Mr Schindler? <laughs> There are 50,000 Zulu outside. Now tell Jade to get back inside and keep her <laughs> bloody mouth shut. <laughs> this T-1000 cybernetic organism has encountered a problem and needs to close. 
Do you wish to send an error report? <laughs> My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, but on weekends, Marjorie. <laughs> A census taker tried to test me once. I ate his liver with some fish fingers and a bottle of Jacob's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Cheltenham! <laughs> well, there's one thing I should tell you, Mr Darcy. I have chlamydia. <laughs> What, Rambo? You want to wait for a UN resolution? <laughs> <laughs> you were only supposed to blow the bloody doors off, Ibrahim. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, but thank you for phoning the BT helpline. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Skywalker, I am your mother. <laughs> The next topic is <laughs> unlikely excerpts from a nature documentary. Do you see this little fella here? Who? <laughs> <laughs> <Pool! laughs> I'm having to whisper because this woman's husband is in the room next door. <laughs> This beautiful hummingbird is no match for my squash racket. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having to whisper because this bear has got me in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Penguin with his head trapped in a beer can. Tragic and yet somehow hilarious. <laughs> I'm stood here, in the jungle, in my bathrobe, because my luggage is still at Heathrow. <laughs> Welcome back to Pimp My Hippo. <laughs> and here we have two insects shagging away. <laughs> 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 Out of the water climbs a majestic otter who turns... Oh, no, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, the lion's after the impala and the lion's got the impala tucking, my son! <laughs> lion one, impala nil! <laughs> I'm the ghost of Steve Irwin and welcome to Animals Kill the Daftest Bastards. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen, Luffy the Bastards. The points at the end of that round go to Russell, Fred and Andy. Pass it back. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Fred McCauley and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Shappy Chris Andy. Thank you for watching. Good night. Mark Steele can't bear politicians who claim to like the Scissor Sisters. Room 101, tomorrow at 10. And there's more comedy to keep you chirpy on BBC Three Now. Brand new series of Man Stroke Woman.